Go on. Go. Okay, so we're discussing the topic. Is Muhammad in the Bible? Uh, I'm going to begin by going through Deuteronomy 18, give my interpretation of it, and then my friends, I forgot your name. Ali. Ali. I forgot your name too. Ben. Ali is going to give his interpretation of it, and then we're going to have a crossfire. And we could very well possibly go to other passages in the Bible also. So I won't start with verse 18, I'll start with verse 15, which says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. You must listen to him. This is what the Lord has, this is what you requested from the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not continue to hear the voice of the Lord our God or see this great fire any longer, so that we will not die. Verse 17. Then the Lord said to me, They have spoken well. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. Okay? I will put I will put my word in his mouth and he will tell them everything I command him. So that's up to verse 18 I've just read. So stopping at verse 18 very briefly, I would like to show that the immediate fulfillment of Deuteronomy 18:18 18, 18 is found in Deuteronomy 34. Because if you go to Deuteronomy 34, the immediate fulfillment of this commandment is uh, this prophecy, sorry, is of course uh, Joshua. Because in chapter 34 of Deuteronomy, starting in verse 9, we see that Joshua has his hand laid on him and he is the immediate fulfillment of verse 18 of chapter 18. It says in verse 9 of 34, Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites obeyed him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. No prophet has risen again in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Now I would say the reason why this particular verse excludes Muhammad from being the prophet like Moses is this passage where it says he knew, Mo he knew the Lord face to face. Now what does face to face mean? Does that mean he saw the face of God? No it does not because we see in Exodus it says no one can see the face of God and live. So what does this mean? To find the proper interpretation of this you have to go to Exodus chapter 33 verse 11. Because in verse 33, verse 11 of Exodus, it says that it says that Moses spoke to God face to face as one would with a friend. So what does that mean? That means Moses got revelation directly from God. Now, if you compare that to the revelations of Muhammad, Muhammad did not see God, and Muhammad did not get revelations from God directly. He got revelations through the angel Gabriel, supposedly. So in that case, he also doesn't fit the prophet like Moses. Okay, now if we continue in verse 18, Bear in mind verse 18 of chapter 18. I've showed you the immediate fulfillment. I will now show you the ultimate fulfillment, okay? The ultimate fulfillment of this passage is to be found in Acts chapter 3. Let's go to Acts chapter 3. Because in Acts chapter 3, we see that Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment. And let's bear this in mind. If we're going to use the Bible as our standard to show that Muhammad's in the Bible, we should first check the Bible itself to see if this prophecy has already been fulfilled. Because if it's already been fulfilled, then there's no need to look elsewhere. Because in chapter 3 of Acts, starting in verse 19, it says these words, Therefore repent and turn back, so that your sins may be wiped out, that seasons of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus, who has been appointed for you as the Messiah. Heaven must receive him until the time of the restoration of all things, which God spoke through about through his holy prophets from the beginning. Now he quotes Isaiah, uh, Je excuse me, he quotes Je Deuteronomy chapter 18 here. It says in verse 22 of Acts chapter 3, Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up a prophet for you, like me from your brothers and sisters. You must listen to him, to everything he tells you. And everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be completely cut off from the people. So what does Acts do? Can we break it down into bits? Because we're, yeah, I'll, there's too I'll, much information. Yeah, we'll, I'll read the That's why I'm nearly finished. finished, sorry. Just, we'll hold to a point and then we'll jump on that point. Big step, 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 step. So the immediate fulfillment is Joshua. The ultimate fulfillment is Jesus Christ according to Acts chapter 3. Okay, so since it's already been fulfilled within the Bible, I would say to uh, Ali that there's no need to look to the Quran if it's already been fulfilled. Now I'll end with this and then I'll hand over to you, okay? And you can have as long as you need. <laughs> and you can question me on anything I've said to remind you if, if you like, okay? 
Now, if we read in verse uh, 20 of Deuteronomy, this also excludes Muhammad, because it says, But the prophet who presumes to speak a message in my name, and I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet must die. Now, what's the easiest way to show that Muhammad spoke in the name of another god? The easiest way to show this is staying with Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1. Because in Deuteronomy 14, verse 1, it says that uh, the Jews are the sons of God. Now, if we read in chapter 5 and chapter 6 of the Quran, it says the Jews are not the sons of God and that God has no sons. So, those three criteria I have gave prove that Muhammad cannot fulfill this passage. One, the immediate context, Joshua. Two, the ultimate fulfillment, Jesus. Three, Muhammad spoke in the name of another God. All yours. Wow, okay, that was a lot for me to take in. But I'm going to try and do my best. Sorry, I'll try and do my best in uh, breaking down what he's what he said I won't I won't look at all the uh, all the passages that he read out because it will probably take me a lifetime to get through them but um, first of all I would like to say that I'm here not to prove that Muhammad is in the Bible but also not dismiss him from even ever being mentioned in the Bible that's my angle his angle is to completely dismiss the fact that Muhammad may or may not be in the Bible. That's my stance. So, he started with De uh, Deuteronomy 18, where it says, I will raise up for them a prophet like you. I would also like to go to 1 John chapter 5. I'm not particular with the verse, but it's a, it's a simple statement where it says, whoever believes that Jesus is the Messiah, he is a child of God. Now, whoever believes in the Messiah is a child of God. Mentioned as a child of God or the son of God. Obviously, back in those days, the Jews used son of God all the time. Jerusalem was the son of, son of God. You know, many prophets were sons of God. The disciples perhaps were sons of God. You know, not only Jesus. So, from this verse I've just read out, John, 1 John chapter 5, it says, whoever believes that Jesus is the Messiah, he is a child of God. Okay, so let's go to perhaps the Quran where Jesus is mentioned. Chapter 3, verse 42 to 45, God is talking about Mary. Behold, the angel said, O Mary, that Allah gives you glad tidings of a word from him his name will be the Messiah so he's mentioned that or he's acknowledged that Jesus is the Messiah so why do you dismiss Muhammad as being a true prophet if he is mentioned in the Quran as the Messiah we Muslims acknowledge that Jesus is the Messiah so according to your Bible you should believe that the Prophet Muhammad is a prophet of God, of the same God, the same God that John believes in. Okay, so if we look at the word Messiah, we have to break it down. Obviously, people know that know the word Messiah. They know the word anointed, but what does it mean? It means in the Hebrew language, it means masaha which means to rub. You know, back in those days, they used to uh, bless the people with, with a masaha, a, a, a rub. So that's why it translates. When, when the Greeks took it, they changed the word. They completely changed the word into Christos, which is a completely different word, but it means the same thing. Now, if you take out the word O, the, the, the letters O-S, and make it, it will end up being Christ. Jesus didn't acknowledge himself as Christ or Christos. He, he considered himself as the Messiah, the anointed one. What I'm talking about, what I'm trying to get at is for them to change the word, a Hebrew word or, or the Arabic word for mas, mas, Masaha or Masir, they change it into Christos for the Greek and taking out the os making it Christ. Christ basically means Messiah or the anointed one, the rubbed one. Okay? So throughout 
biblical history, shall we say, they have a they have an issue of translating words they have no right to translate. And this is the problem. When you translate words into the meaning, you sometimes lose the meaning. Like if you if you called Jesus Christ back in those days, he wouldn't know who you're talking about. We have to acknowledge that they, he spoke Hebrew, not English, or any other language. For every language, there's a different translation or a different word. Okay, that's me. Then. Okay, so I'm going to refer back to Deuteronomy 18. Um, I would like okay. it if you interacted with that. Yeah. I, I, ex I spent quite a lot of time exegeting Deuteronomy 18, Deuteronomy 4, Deuteronomy 34, Acts chapter 4, to show that Joshua was the immediate fulfillment. Christ was the ultimate fulfillment. I'm just and I showed putting, you. I'm just I know, putting. I'm just putting uh, the word Messiah, I know, I know. the Jah Bible I know. acknowledging I know. Messiah, I know. and I showed you that and the Quran acknowledging okay. the Messiah. And, and, I, and I know the Quran also acknowledges um, that Jesus was a historical person. It doesn't mean they're talking about the same Jesus. And let me just go on to the argument you did make. You made the argument that in one John five, it talks about sons of God. Okay, um, that doesn't. I'm not trying to be picky, but. That doesn't really have anything to do with Muhammad being in the Bible, but I'll, I, will, I will quickly address no, that. I didn't mention it. Was One second. I will God. quickly address that. It was, uh, yeah, yes, other people are called the sons of God in the Bible. If you read um, John chapter 3, verse 18, Jesus specifically excludes himself from the people who are called the sons of God. Okay, because in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1, the Jews are called the sons of God. Okay, that means spiritual children. God adopted Israel as his nation. The, the verse I quoted was whoever believes that Jesus is the Messiah I'm, I'm is a child. To, that's fine, yeah. Whoever believes Jesus is the Messiah is a child of God, a spiritual child by adoption, okay? Um, you read Romans, you read the book of Romans, it talks about being adopted as sons, okay? Now, if you read chapter three of John, verse 18, Christ distinguishes himself as the one and only son in comparison to those who are adopted as sons, okay? Because in chapter three, verse 18, it says, whoever believes in him, Jesus, is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. So Christ distinguishes himself there. And not only that, at the baptism, if you read the baptism of Christ, okay, God the Father turns up at the baptism of Christ. Okay, you have the Holy Spirit descending upon the Son. You have the Father speaking from heaven saying, this is my Son with whom I'm all pleased, or this is my Son. Uh, whom I love. Well, I get, sometimes they get the transfiguration and the baptism mixed up, but they say the same thing in both in both circumstances. God turns up and calls Jesus his own son. Nowhere else in history has God turned up at a baptism and identified someone as his son. So Jesus distinguishes himself from other sons of God. God the Father distinguishes his son from other sons. Okay. Um, so yeah, basically that, that's my that's my answer to the the sons by the tons argument. But I would quickly like to ask you to touch upon Deuteronomy 18:18. 18, 18. Sons by the dozen. Son, yeah, okay, that's fine. This, uh, I'll show you how Jesus distinguishes himself and so does so does God from other sons, okay? But in Deuteronomy 18, 18, would you not agree that the three criteria I gave you, that Joshua was the immediate fulfillment according to chapter 34, Jesus was the ultimate fulfillment according to Acts chapter 3, <clears throat> and that according to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1, that excludes Muhammad. And also 30, chapter 34 excludes Muhammad because it says that Muhammad got revelation from God directly. When, when Muhammad, we know, did not get revelation from God directly, he never saw God. So would you address those points? Okay. In his did own... Sorry, did no. Muhammad ever see God? No, because whoever sees God is, uh, is dead, according to the Bible. Which but, but, verse is that? that? But that's in... Um, that's in... Whoever uh, sees that's, God... That, that's in Exodus, but in Exodus chapter 33, verse 11. No, but it, you... you no, no, I'm, no, no but does it, does it say that? Yeah, if you, you can't see the face of God and live, it says. But in yeah. Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, it says that um, Moses spoke to God face to face as one would with a friend. Now, that, that okay. doesn't mean Moses saw the literal face Did of God. Did he see God? It, it means he got revelation directly from God. Okay? okay, so he didn't see God either. No, but no, no. But the, that's not the argument I'm making. The argument I'm making. Did he see God or did he not see God? If you let me you just said, Ali, the revelation. Ali, 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 let me speak. So that's not the argument I'm making. I'm not making the argument that he saw God face to face. It says face to face as one would with a friend, which means he had a close relationship. He had a direct relationship with God. In contrast to Muhammad, Moses got revelation directly from God on, on the on the mountain. Okay, Muhammad got revelation through the angel Gabriel. So already that separates Moses and Muhammad. So Muhammad can't be the prophet like Moses. But also, as I said earlier, if, if we are both using the Bible, but to, we can still we can still point, we can still admit or submit that 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 
Moses never saw God. Yeah, but that's not my argument. So I'm not. I'm not making. So it argument. doesn't matter who sent the message or not. No, it matters because no, no one saw. But, but, whoever no, but sees no, God. But what's the argument? The argument is that Moses. Not live. The argument. That's the argument. But no, no, no. That, you're, you can't tell me what my argument is, Ali. My argument is that Moses. Well, that was my, my argument. Okay. <laughs> well, this is my argument. That yeah. Moses got revelation directly from God. Muhammad got it through the angel. So he can't be the prophet like Moses in that circumstance. But also, would you not agree? Now, since we are both using the Bible, in particular, we are both using Deuteronomy, okay? Would, would you not agree that if we're both going to use the Bible, we should check the Bible first to see if that prophecy has already been fulfilled? Now, as Acts chapter 3 says, it's already been fulfilled in Christ. So if it's already been fulfilled in Christ, there's no need to look elsewhere. Okay, let's read from 18 then. Would you read first 20? Would you read first 20? Read first 20 for the, for the camera. Oh, so you want me to skip 18? No, no, you can go to that, but... Briefly read verse 20, because that also will show you that Muhammad, that Muhammad came in the name of another God. Because it says that if anyone speaks a commandment in the name of God, and you know, it's wrong, then he's speaking in the name okay. of another God. Now, okay, if so you, 20. Yeah, yeah but if, you, if, you, if you correlate that, correspond that to um, Deuteronomy 14 verse 1, Deuteronomy 14 verse 1, says that the Jews are the sons of Israel, uh, the sons of God, okay? Now, if Israel are the sons of God, Muhammad should have said the same thing if he comes in the name of that same God. Because in chapter 5 and chapter 6 of the Quran, it says that the, the one, the Jews are not the sons of God, and two, God has no sons. So if Muhammad's saying the Jews are not the sons of God, but God says in Deuteronomy that you're, we're both using, that the Jews are his spiritual sons, then they're coming in the name of two different gods. I think so we're, getting criteria, divert, we're diverting from the <coughs> topic here, which is, no, does uh, Muhammad exist in the Bible? No, he's a prophesy. Um, which, 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 which is what I'm yeah. saying is, if, the, if these verses that I've read to you are true, that cannot be talking about Muhammad, because Muhammad does not fit either three of that criteria. So you're telling me that, um, that Muhammad never spoke from from God's mouth. Well, I, well, Aisha said, Aisha said in, in a hadith, Sahih Bukhari, <coughs> she said, if anyone tells you that Muhammad has seen his Lord, he is a liar. So Aisha says, if you say Muhammad saw God, you are a liar. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Well, then you need to tell me. If Muhammad did not have di direct revelation from God, if it came through the angel Gabriel, that's different from how Moses got his revelation. The holy, because Moses holy, got his revelation directly from Gabriel or Jibrael is is the Holy Spirit according to you? No. No, we don't. The angel Gabriel is not the Holy Spirit. The angel Gabriel is the is the angel Gabriel. We don't we don't believe that Gabriel is the Holy Spirit. What is a, what is who is Gabriel? Gabriel is an angel. Just an angel. Gabriel's an angel. He's not he's not the Holy Spirit. He's not God. He's not the Spirit of God. He is he is an angel sent by God to deliver a message. Okay, so <coughs> So, so let, let, me me read, let me read verse 20 and yes. then we can move on because we're going to be stuck on Deuteronomy. Else. Okay, if you want to, we can go to Isaiah maybe after. Like if we're, we're, if we're going to argue whether Muhammad believes in other gods or other, another god, then that's a different topic. No, it's the same topic. We, we, have to, we have to use this verse to prove or disprove whether Muhammad fulfilled this, this Well, yeah, we have to use this verse, but I also would say we can go elsewhere to the Bible since yeah. we are using the Bible. Yeah, I've got and and I, I'm saying that Acts chapter 3 says that Jesus was the ultimate fulfillment of it, of uh, Deuteronomy Okay, 18, so I'll read 18. verse 20. But if any prophet dares to speak a message in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or to speak in the name of other gods, that prophet must be put to death. Yeah. Okay, so tell me which other god Muhammad worshipped, okay, and then so you can disprove him okay, completely. Okay. And then the, the, the this debate would be completely be over now. Okay, okay. It would be over. Okay, then let me end that debate. Okay. <laughs> I'll 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 end the debate. I'll, I'll say the easiest way, <laughs> the easiest way to show that Muhammad came in the name of another god, is to stay in Deuteronomy. For all, all of you at okay. home watching, um, go to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse one, because in Deuteronomy 14, verse one. It says that the Jews are the sons of God, spiritual children of God, okay, because God adopted them as his own people. Now, if you go to chapter 5 and chapter 6 of the Quran, it says that the Jews are not the sons of God, and it also says that God has no sons. So if, according to Deuteronomy, God has, God has children, and the Jews are the, the sons of God, and Muhammad says the Jews are not the sons of God, then Muhammad is speaking in the name of another God. No, because in the Quran, the term, the verses you'll find sometimes uh, uh, Beni Israel is mentioned or quoted in the Quran, which means the children of Israel. Not the children of God, though. 
It doesn't. It say it calls them. Yeah, Benny Israel. Israel how do you say it? Benny Israel. <coughs> Benny Israel. So okay. But that says that that means they're the children of Israel. Also, it doesn't mean children of God. But you've got to admit, in the Bible, it says Israel is the son of God as well. That's that's my argument. I'm saying Israel. Is, so I'm, I'm saying Israel, according to Deuteronomy 14:1, are called the sons of God. Okay. Now. Maybe we could go to another passage after, okay. but I'd like to finish off with that. So, that, that in, according to so, uh, according to the Quran, according, the Jews are the God. according to me, um, everything that passage. that's mentioned in the Quran, that's been quoted in the Quran, and the hadiths, he mentions um, any every any only things that that God wants him to speak, not of his own accord, and this this. Verse 20, Deuteronomy 18, verse 20, <coughs> clearly shows that Prophet Muhammad is is a prophet because he only used God's commands or what God commanded him to say or do. And that's that's my argument for this one. Okay.